Good morning to you peeps, Lisa there again and this morning I'm delighted to be bringing us the first episode in our new little mini series of um, basically how to build a cigar box guitar. Now this will be the basis of how to build any cigar box guitar I would say whether it's one string, six, two, <laughs> this is how I would go about it anyway. So um, yeah, enough from me and straight in. So, referring to the captain's log, ahoy me hearties. <laughs> we know I'd be lost without this. I have jotted down three string kitty bill. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. Well, that's a well used saying, and I absolutely agree, which is why I did enter the sound lab at 6 a.m. It's about 20 past nine now. But I wanted to set up all the pieces um, that we're going to put together, which you will see very soon, by the way. And I hope you can sort of see it all. I'll just move the table slightly. And to give you the basic shape of what we're doing. Now, this is how I would generally do a cigar box guitar. There are other ways, no means. But um, I thought we'll do the most comprehensive build that we can. Because this is our community build, obviously. So we're all involved with this particular one here. And I do like that. So I'll quickly run you through what I did. I didn't think you really wanted to see two hours of wood being cut, but you will see some wood cutting <laughs> as I will be demonstrating this. We did have a few questions on this lovely tool. So I shall answer those now. This whole guitar build, and in fact, two others that I'm doing, uh, all being done basically with this, which is known most commonly anyway, as um, a Japanese pull saw. I say that slowly because of my accent. A Japanese pull saw. <laughs> reason it's called that is because unlike most Western saws, so say like a tenon saw, where the main cutting action is on the push action, and the handle tends to be on the end, this does the main cutting on the pull action. I do find that they cut very nice straight lines, these. They take a bit of getting used to because at first they're a bit counterintuitive if you've been using the standard sort of saws. Obviously it's got more of a knife handle, so it's a bit hard to demonstrate in here, but when you're cutting, it's good to keep your arm at a real right angle and then you're gonna get a nice straight cut. Another little tip, I did hear Chicken Bun John say this, and he's absolutely right when he was quoting, quoting his dad, who said, basically, when you've got a saw, you bought the whole saw, so use the whole saw. And I know what he meant, because it's tempting just to hack away like that, but you want to get a nice smooth action across the whole length of the blade, and you'll get accurate cuts, unlike Lee's all half the time, but that's another story. Yeah, so I hope that answers your questions. Anyway, everyone who was interested in the Japanese pull saw, I'm won over by these. I think they're well worth getting. Um, yeah, I probably would like to get a slightly larger one, actually. And they're not expensive, but they're not cheap. But if you can afford one, um, this was about 15 bucks American. Um, yeah, about 12 quid in the UK. And uh, I think they're well worth it anyway because, you know, but I'll be showing you more on that at a later date also. Um, so I've set everything up in what I would call a dry run. So nothing's been stuck together, obviously. I've kind of built up how I would have the neck to hopefully correspond with the depth of the box. And that seems to fit pretty well. A little on the box. Now, I did do all the boring measurements, but I will show you how I went about that. Because invariably, when you get these, they're an awkward size, you know, they might be six and seven eighths inches or like 17 and a half centimetres. And then you've got to try and halve that. <laughs> there are ways and means. Um, basically, you can cut a strip of paper to the width. So a strip of paper that big and then just fold it in half and you'll get dead centre. Um, you can have them at a slight angle, which if you sit down to play quite a lot, I think is quite nice because you can kind of rest it one on your leg. Um, 
I like them sort of square or just slightly tilted like that myself. Probably be going with something like that in any case. And one other thing before I talk about the measurements actually is how I dress the box. So I have another box here which is part of another film. And often you'll find inside is this paper insert or sometimes it's flat to cover the cigars and you can take those out sometimes you can sometimes you can't depends how well stuck they are as you can see this is a little bit scruffy on the back so with this one i'm going to stick this on here so we've got a nice all-round design which is basically what i did with this one in here was the paper insert that's now on the back I will show you how it's done to get it nice and flush. Basically, you glue it and then start from the centre with a rolling pin and just roll it out like you were rolling dough, really, or something like that. And it gets all the air bubbles out then. So you've got a nice, strong kind of decoration on the back, whatever you want to call that. <laughs> Take it out in the middle. I will remove the lid, actually. But that's very easy to replace on these paper boxes. There are no actual hinges on these. And I do like these because they just... Everything seems to work out quite well. Like, the depth goes to this gold band at the back. Almost always on these. So, you know, once you've built a few, you kind of know where you'll probably go with this. Um, so using that paper strip method, I did find the centre of the box. And then, basically... I just found the center of one of the struts and you can see I put a little pencil mark the same way a little piece of paper and just folded it in half and then you're not getting frustrated with a lot of awkward measurements always always though and I haven't brought it with me square everything so you will see me squaring this quite a lot during the build it's not really a case of oh you square it once and then like that's that um, you need to keep checking it and it can be a little bit time consuming but it's definitely worth it in any case I would say as we say <laughs> fail to prepare prepare to fail um, I mean there can be failures with these old boxes anyway which I will discuss later because I've had one or two recently but um, I think this should be pretty solid for what we want yeah and so yeah enough waffle from me so as you can see I've set it up we're going to do a traditional sort of cigar box guitar here so the strings like the saddle for it will actually be in the tail piece and more will be revealed as we go along obviously because I know I didn't explain that very well but we'll drill holes in here which will bring the strings up through and across the top like that rather than using a hinge or something which you quite often see me do um, there will be more of that style also though, so you can check that out. And that's basically it, so we're going to have the tail there. I've used quite a thick piece of wood to raise the neck and also to make a strong heel. There is a gap there because we'd probably be running some wires through. Um, there's the neck. And we're going to have something of a short scale guitar here. I'm thinking around 22 and a quarter inch because I've seen this on another video again Chicken Bone John and he was playing these short scale cigar box guitars and they were absolutely amazing they sounded beautiful so I thought we'll go with that because it's quite a large box we've got quite a large body and I think that will sound nice here's the fingerboard as you can see it is slightly wider than the neck at this point there is a good reason for that I didn't just forget <laughs> which again basically comes into play when we shape the neck so there will be more of that as well just to whet your appetite and we're going to stick I think on this build with just the old-fashioned straight piece of wood headstock so it's the lower plank of wood um, yeah I'm not going to make any fancy shaped headstocks or anything on this one because I thought it'd be nice just to stick to something a bit traditional with this one. And I probably will fit a piezo. I know a lot of us are fans of acoustics. And uh, looking around. Yes, I've got one behind me actually. 
this is one of the first ones I ever built and I love this it's um leather rose cigar box how did the head stop I probably wouldn't do these days <laughs> but uh I'm thinking this is nice it's um it's purely acoustic and it's got a lot of springs inside as I remember it had a really nice sound so like for all you acoustic fans hopefully we'll have this one on the way soon yeah it's a nice little instrument I've had that quite a long time yeah so basically that's it next video will be at the workbench where we stick all this together but just to show you anyway this is kind of the result that we'll be after this is another one that i'm working on at the moment and you can see we haven't done the tailpiece on this yet it's going to be a similar size basically i was working on this one the sunny girl build but the box failed yeah but not to worry because instead we're going to use this beautiful box which is a lot nicer to be honest and i got this in the meantime so something like that whichever way <laughs> and you'll see that being built at the same time one other but that's under wraps for now but more will become apparent as um i start building these because as i say quite often i do things in batches so i really had to think like a to B through X, Y, Z this morning, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Which is why it took me three hours just to like get this arranged. But uh, I think it was worth it. I certainly do. I hope that's whetted your appetite. Um, anything significant, I will put on a community post. There's our other finger ball. I will just quickly refer to the uh, captain's log. I know there was one other thing actually that I was going to mention already. If I can just flip through ever so quickly, here we go. So I'm saying, yep, cut neck, paper backing and decals, traditional bitty, nice short scale, 22 and a quarter inch. Now, many of us will remember, especially if you were around last year, Dave. Dave was our completely thrown together, let's use plywood. Let's see if it'll last six months, <laughs> Gitty build. But I've actually taken him out and played him in front of other people. So I played him live this instrument. As I did joke that you would probably get thrown out of any guitar club if you turned up with this, although I didn't. So that was quite, quite a thing really. But it did occur to me the other day, I looked on the back and that's in European format or UK format. So it's day, month, year. So 1st of May last year. He was finally created, so he's nearly a year old. That's twice as long as I thought he would survive. Um, now this is bordering on a joke, so you have been warned, okay. Inotation for all you guitaristas. How do you set the inotation right on a guitar like this? It's quite easy, you just wait for the neck to bend. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That leads me on, you see, we, I did have to bodge the neck. And like, with these sorts of instruments, you know, that's what they're like. I think C6 Steve put it best. He said, you know, they're made from garbage. You spend half the time <laughs> mid-song <laughs> screwing them back together. The fingerboard started to come adrift, I think because the neck was kinked. So like, I don't know if you can see, but I inserted loads of very thin pieces of wood. A couple of extra screws. And um, yeah, jobs are good and you can see he's got pretty tatty because I've been playing him quite a lot. Bold as long. Yeah. And so, yeah, basically, perhaps a little bit smarter, but this will be a larger version. Yeah, so I'm definitely keen for this one. Thank you for all the wonderful suggestions and everyone that suggested this and wanted to see a pretty standard build, as I would put it. Yeah, because I'm absolutely delighted. I think this one's going to go well. Let's hope so anyway. <laughs> so, enough waffling from me. And um, yeah, if there's anything I have missed, um, I'll catch us up on the next video, which hopefully will be quite soon actually, um, when we're at the workbench. And then we've got everything set out. And we can see what we're doing.
That's it. So, leaves just for me to say, as always, wherever you are, do stay safe. Whatever you're doing, do stay blessed. And most important of all, whatever life brings, keep building. Okay then, peeps. Thanks for joining me this morning. That's been wonderful. Bye for now then. Bye.